Welcome to part four of our Azure Solutions Architect Expert exam practice question series, friends. This is question number 22 of the series. You have an on-premise database that you plan to migrate to Azure. You need to design the database architecture to meet the following requirements. And your requirements are the architecture should support scaling up and down. It should support geo-redundant backups. It should support a database of up to 75 terabyte, and it should be optimized for online transaction processing OLTP. What should you include in the recommendation? Now, the first part of the question is around the service that you should include. And your options are Azure SQL database, Azure SQL managed instance, Azure Synapse Analytics, SQL Server on Azure Virtual Machines. Folks, the suitable service for the given requirement will be Azure SQL Database. Now, Azure SQL Database is a fully managed database service with built-in capabilities for scalability, geo-redundancy, and backup. And it is designed for OLTP workloads. Let's now understand why other options are incorrect here. Now, option B, Azure SQL Managed Instance does not support over 8 terabyte database sizes. Option C, Azure Synapse Analytics is best suited for data warehousing and analytics, which is OLAP. And the last option, SQL Server on Azure Virtual Machine is not ideal as it's not a managed service. Now, the next part of the question is talking about which service tier should you use for the service that you chose in the previous part of the question. Your options are basic, business critical, general purpose, hyperscale, premium, and standard. And folks, you will need to choose hyperscale service tier because it supports up to 100 terabyte data size and our requirement is to have a support of 75 terabyte, which is not supported by any other service tiers. Let's look at next question. You have an Azure subscription that contains a storage account. An application sometimes writes duplicate files to the storage account. You have a PowerShell script that identifies and deletes duplicate files in the storage account. Currently, the script is run manually after approval from the operations manager. You need to recommend a serverless solution that performs the following actions. Runs the script once an hour to identify whether duplicate files exist sends an email notification to the operations manager requesting approval to delete the duplicate files, process an email response from the operations manager specifying whether the deletion was approved, runs the script if the deletion was approved. What should you include in the recommendation? Your options are combination of different services. And the first one is Azure Logic Apps and Azure Event Grid. Azure Pipelines and Azure Service Fabric, Azure Logic Apps and Azure Functions, Azure Functions and Azure Batch. Folks, you can use a combination of Azure Logic Apps and Functions to achieve the given requirement. Now you use Azure Logic Apps to create a workflow that runs the PowerShell script once an hour using a time-based trigger sends an email notification to the operations manager for approval and processes the email response. Now you use Azure functions to host the PowerShell script, which can be triggered by the logic app when the operations manager approves the deletion as well. Combining Azure logic apps and Azure functions will provide the necessary components to meet the requirement of this scenario. Question number 24. You are designing an application that will aggregate content for users. You need to recommend a database solution for the application. The solution must meet the following requirements. It should support SQL commands. It should support multi-master writes and guarantee low latency read operations. What should you include in the recommendation? Your options are Azure SQL database that uses active geo replication, Azure SQL database hyperscale, 
Azure database for PostgreSQL, Azure Cosmos DB SQL API. For an application that requires SQL support, multi-master writes, and low latency read operations, the best recommendation is Azure Cosmos DB with the SQL API. Cosmos DB provides a SQL API allowing you to query the data using SQL-like commands and supports multi-master configurations allowing write operations in multiple regions. This ensures high availability and enables low latency writes from any region. Now, Cosmos DB also offers automatic distribution of data across multiple regions with configurable read replicas that provide low latency reads globally. So folks, if you still have any doubts in why I have chosen Azure Cosmos DB SQL API, then please post your doubts in the comment section and I'll try to address them as soon as possible. You have an on-premise network and an Azure subscription. The on-premise network has several branch offices. A branch office in Toronto contains a virtual machine named VM1 that is configured as a file server. Users access the shared files on VM1 from all the offices. You need to recommend a solution to ensure that the users can access the shared files as quickly as possible if Toronto branch office is inaccessible. What should you include in the recommendation? Your options are a recovery services vault and Windows Server backup, Azure Blob Container and Azure File Sync, a recovery services vault and Azure Backup, an Azure File Share and Azure File Sync. And folks, the correct answer here is option D, an Azure File Share and Azure File Sync. Azure File Share provides a cloud-based SMB file share that can be mounted to any office, ensuring fast access to files, even if the original on-prem VM is unavailable. And Azure File Sync allows you to centralize your file share in Azure and sync files from your on-premise VM to an Azure File Share. In case the Toronto branch office is inaccessible, users can access the files directly from the Azure File Share without interruption. By caching frequently accessed files in Azure, Azure File Sync ensures that users can still access important files quickly. Folks, let's look at question number 26. You have an Azure subscription. The subscription contains 100 virtual machines that run Windows Server 2022 and have the Azure Monitor agent installed. You need to recommend a solution that meets the following requirements forwards JSON formatted logs from the virtual machine to a log analytics workspace, transforms the logs and stores the data in a table in the log analytics workspace. What should you include in the recommendation? And the first part of the question is to forward the logs, what should you include? And your options are a linked storage account for the log analytics workspace, an Azure monitored data collection endpoint, a service endpoint. Folks, for forwarding the logs, you should use Azure Monitor Data Collection Endpoint. Azure Monitor Data Collection Endpoint, also called as DCE, is designed to forward logs from various sources, including virtual machines, to a log analytics workspace. It allows you to collect custom log data in JSON format and forward it for analysis. DC in combination with DCR, which is data collection rules, allows you to transform log data before it is ingested into log analytics. And after transformation, the logs are stored in a custom or predefined table in the log analytics workspace. Now, folks, the next part of this question is, what should you include in the recommendation to transform the logs and store the data? Your options are a KQL query, a WQL query, an XPath query. To transform the logs and store the data in Azure Log Analytics, you should use KQL queries. KQL query language is used by Azure Log Analytics to query and transform data in the workspace. 
KQL allows you to parse, filter, and manipulate the data being stored in the log analytics tables. It is specifically designed for log queries and data manipulation in the Azure environment. Now friends, let's understand why other options are incorrect. WQL, which is WMI query language, is used to query information from Windows management instrumentation, which is WMI, typically for performance or configuration data on Windows system, but it is not used for transforming and querying logs in Azure Log Analytics. Now, XPath is a query language used for selecting nodes from XML documents, not for querying or transforming log data in Log Analytics. Folks, if you are liking the content, do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe the channel. Question number 27. You have a multi-tier app named App1 and an Azure SQL database named SQL1. The backend service of App1 writes data to SQL1. Users use the App1 client to read the data from SQL1. During periods of high utilization, the users experience delays retrieving the data. You need to minimize how long it takes for data requests. What should you include in the solution? Your options are Azure Cache for Redis, Azure Content Delivery Network, Azure Data Factory, Azure Synapse Analytics. Friends, to minimize delays in retrieving data during periods of high utilization in the app, the best solution would be Azure Cache for Redis. Because it stores frequently accessed data in memory, allowing for faster data retrieval compared to querying the database every time. It is ideal for improving application performance by reducing latency and offloading the backend database during high utilization periods. Now let's understand why other options are incorrect. Azure Content Delivery Network is used for delivering static content, which is images or videos from globally distributed servers. It is not designed for improving performance of database-driven applications. Azure Data Factory is a data integration service that automates data movement and transformation between sources. It's not relevant for caching or minimizing database query response times. And Azure Synapse Analytics is designed for large scale data analysis and business intelligence, which is OLAP, which is not suited for low latency, high speed transactional data access, which is OLTP as required in this case. Question number 28 of the series. You are designing an app that will include two components. The components will communicate by sending messages via a queue. You need to recommend a solution to process the messages by using a first in first out pattern, which is FIFO pattern. What should you include in the recommendation? Your options are storage queues with a custom metadata setting, Azure service bus queues with partitioning enabled, Azure service bus queues with sessions enabled, storage queues with a stored access policy. Folks, you should use Azure service bus queues with session enabled in this case. This ensures FIFO messaging because session enabled queues allow the messages that share the same session ID to be processed in the order they were sent. Now let's understand why other options are incorrect. Storage queues with custom metadata setting. Folks, storage queues do not natively support FIFO. Then the next option is your service bus queues with partitioning enabled. Partitioning does not guarantee FIFO as it distributes message across multiple partitions. And the next option was storage queues with a stored access policy. This is for controlling access, not for message ordering. So folks, that's all for this part of the series. We will be back soon with more questions. So stay tuned.